Christian Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining us on this beautiful, blessed Sunday morning. You know, during these trying times, the pandemic, the loss of jobs, the injustices, the loss of loved ones, we need to know who to call on to help us through. We have to call on Jesus. He is the only one who sees our situations and can do something about them. He is the only one who can take us through our situations. And once we get on the other side of our situations, we still have our right minds. So if you haven't called on him yet, he is waiting and he is able. Our scripture today is Psalm 62, 5 through 8. And it reads, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. I'll read that one more time. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times, not just in the good times, but in the bad times. Trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Our song this morning is, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, please do not pass me by. Help me see, pass me by.
Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity. We thank you, Father God, again for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for molding and shaping our lives. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping us in tough times, in tough situations. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping our hearts, keeping our minds, and keeping us focused. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us today. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Bless us today, Father God, as we move forward in your name. Lord, we ask you to rescue me from me. Hide me behind the Holy Spirit, that we, he will stand and preach and teach your word, that old habits will be rolled away, old burdens will be thrown away, and that we will be better, Father God, at, at 1230 than we were at 1030. That lives will continue to roll on, and that men, women, boys, and girls will give you the glory and give you the honor for who you are and what you've done. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless me as I stand. Lord, that people will receive your words. Thank you for the privilege of speaking for you to the people. And thank you, Father God, for speaking to me on behalf of all of us. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on our live broadcast from our re remote location. Thank you again for being a part of our service here at the New Beginning Church from our re remote location. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you so much. Our scripture today is found in Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 12 through 18. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 12 through 18. Some have asked, Preacher, why are you staying on Proverbs so long? Why are you dealing with wisdom over and over again? It's because in times like these, we need to have wisdom. Amen. We need to have skill to, to understand what, we, what God wants us to do with what, what knowledge we have. A lot of us have knowledge, but do we have the skill, the wisdom of how to apply that knowledge? So we want to continue today in that vein. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 12 through 18. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs, the chapter is 8, verses are 12 through 18. It says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance in the evil way, in the perverse mind I hate. Counsel is mine, sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, and rulers decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, and the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me in doing riches and righteousness. I want to talk about the counsel of wisdom. The counsel of wisdom. During this time, we find ourselves in the need of counseling. We find ourselves at a point in our lives where we realize we don't know everything and we need counseling. I say to you today, if you need counseling, you need to take it to God in prayer. Because the counsel that God gives, he will not tell your secrets. The counsel that God gives will maintain us and will keep us through these troubling times. We live in pretty bad situations. We live in perilous times. Paul says these times are going to come, and I say to you today, these times are here. Mm -hmm. Paul says there will be a time when men think more of themselves than they think of God. <clears throat> they will look and worship the creature more than they worship the creator. Mm -hmm. Men would be heady and high-minded, stuck on themselves, blown up and blowing things out of proportion 
but they will not fear the Lord himself. When we look at the text, we realize that wisdom is in a courtroom setting. We began this chapter 8 some weeks ago, and I said to you that wisdom is calling all of us to court. Wisdom is saying, you need to come over here. Wisdom is summoning us. Wisdom is looking forward to us showing up. The text declares that wisdom is crying out aloud, it's crying at the hilltops, it's crying at the intersection, and it is crying in businesses as well as in the courtroom. Wisdom is hollering out to the naive, the simple ones, it's, it's screaming to those who think they are clever. Wisdom is hollering and screaming and yelling for us. Wisdom says his understanding is plain. He, wisdom says that her, her, her knowledge is rather to be chosen than silver and gold. Right. Here we find the writer, the wise writer. The wise writer depicts wisdom as a person. Matter of fact, he depicts wisdom as a female. It is called personification. Personification. So this this particular writer personifies wisdom, the theme called wisdom, as a woman. He places characteristics of human beings, of a person, in wisdom. So in the text, in, in chapter 8, verses uh, 12 through 18, we, we hang our hat today where wisdom is speaking. And, and we want to talk about the counsel of wisdom. In every courtroom setting, there is a defending counselor and there uh, is a prosecuting counselor. Whenever we go to court, it is wise, it is advised for you to always take counsel the court with you. Uh, many, have, many have come to the conclusion that they can serve as their own lawyer. They can serve as their own counselor. Some people have gotten through without counsel. But for the most part, most of us who are, who are not astute in law, we need to take a counselor along with us. Mm -hmm. So wisdom this morning serves as our counselor. Right. In verse number 12, he sa she says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. She says, wisdom is speaking, and she says, I wisdom. The word wisdom in this, this particular pericope means good sense, mm -hmm. skillfulness. You see, it's good to have knowledge, but it's better to have good sense along with your knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's good to have knowledge, but you need to have skill in order to know how to apply that knowledge. The problem today, young and old, men and women are not applying wisdom before they move. They're not applying wisdom before they speak. Today's Sunday school lesson talked about the fact that we need to make sure, we need to examine ourselves, we need to make sure that we understand there's a time to speak and there's a time to stop talking. Yeah, we have to teach our young people. We have to teach them that there's a time to speak up for yourself. And then there's a time to stop speaking because God can do better with the speaking than you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a time for everything. There's a time to cry. There's a time to, to moan. There's a time to laugh. And there's a time to stop laughing. We need to understand that wisdom will tell us that we need to have uh, Prudence. Prudence is discretion. We, we need to know when, where, and how to apply our knowledge. It's interesting to note in this text, in verses 12 through 13, he deals with the negative parts. He deals with the word discretion. He, he deals with the word discretion in a way that is talking about a plan. 
And it's not talking about a good plan. It's talking about a bad plan. The text is talking about discretion being a plan. There's a bad plan that is a plan of wickedness. Let me tell you, all around us, we can see every day of the week where people are finding themselves creating bad plans for those of us who live along beside them. Yeah, people will always dig ditches. Big Mama used to say it like this. She would say, if you dig one ditch, God can lead you around the ditch. Because God has a way of seeing things far ahead of us. Because we serve the omniscient God. He is the God who sees everything. He is the God who, who, who enables us to worship him and he shows us around. He is our GPS. He is, he is our global positioning system. He is, God is the one who leads us around danger and trouble. The senior saints used to say that God teaches us and shows us and delivers us from danger seen and unseen. You say last night the robbers was robbing, but God protected us. Last night the thieves were breaking in, but, but God protected us. Last night, while we slept in the very image of death, God kept us, and he kept us in spite of us. Mm -hmm. Not because we've been so good, not because we're so clean, not because we've been so holy. He kept us in spite of us, in spite of our meanness. There are some folk that's mean. They, they just walk this world to make life miserable for other people. That's what he's talking about. When he talks about discretion here, he's talking about it in a negative way. There are people who have plans. They have plotted to get you. But just keep reading a little further. He says, God has a way of blessing us if we just fear him. Look at verse number 14, he's, uh, 13. He says, for the fear of God, uh, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is to hate pride and arrogance. The fear of the Lord is to hate the evil way. And the fear of the Lord is to hate the perverse mouth. God hates those things. Mm -hmm. Let me just unpack that for you. First of all, it, this word fear, this word fear means to reverence. To reverence God. You know, in order, in order for us to have wisdom, we got to first reverence God. We have to first fear him. This word fear means to have direct relationship to God. We have to first reverence God. We got to respect him. We have to respect God in such a way that God, we understand that God can bless us regardless of what we're going through. Mm -hmm. Too often times we give up on God. Somebody in our family died, so we give up on God. So we had a bad diagnosis at the doctor's office, so we give up on God. Uh, our, our businesses went bankrupt, so we give up on God. Too often times, we give up on God when we really need to be running to God. Mm -hmm. We have to respect God regardless of what situations we call it up in. So he says, he says, the fear of the Lord. This Lord that he's talking about here is the Jehovah God. He is the self-existing God. He is the eternal God, the God that existed before there was a wind or where. He says, we must have the fear of the Lord. And he says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Now, if you fear the Lord, if you reverence God, if, if, you, if you reverence God to the point that you love the Lord, then you hate evil. You, you, don't com you, don't, you don't compromise with evil. Yes. You don't join in with evil. You hate evil. God delivers some of our congressmen that would do anything because of a party. Yes. They will say anything because of a party. God deliver us from doctors that will agree with the president. Because he is the president and because he's a bully and he threatens them. God deliver the preacher who will allow any and everything to be said and to go on in their presence and they never speak up. The Old Testament saints always talked about the fact that we have prophetic leadership in our preachers. 
That's why, that's why Amos says, let, let justice run like a mighty stream and, and let, let righteousness run like a flood because we understand that there ought to be a man of God who will speak up for what is right. And let me tell you, putting children in cages regardless of where they're from is wrong. Let me tell you, taking, taking away child care is wrong. Taking away government support of schools is wrong. Mm -hmm. Forcing children to go back to school in the middle of a pandemic that's increasing rather than decreasing, mm -hmm. it is wrong. There ought to be somebody somewhere that hates evil enough to stand up and say it is wrong. Amen. We got to stand. We have to stand and, and, and we have to hate evil. Verse number 13, Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate pride. The fear of the Lord is to hate arrogance. The fear of the Lord is to hate the evil way. The fear of the Lord is to hate a perverse mouth. Let me unpack it. It says, to hate means to be an enemy to. To hate means to be a for, against. Uh, to hate means to deliberately stand against. Hate means that it just it just irks you. It gets on your nerve. Too often times we teach our children to hate people when we ought to be teaching them to love them. Yes. Two little boys hadn't seen each other in a while. They looked to be three, four years old. One's black and one's white. And on the main street of town, they see each other and they run down the sidewalk to meet each other and they hug and embrace each other. Mm -hmm. This is a sign that racism is taught. Mm -hmm. Racism, you don't, you're not born with it. Right. You are conditioned with it. You are conditioned in such a way when it comes to racism, you have to be poured into, it has to be poured into you every day. To hate somebody because they are a different color. Racism didn't develop in the womb. Racism was developed when the person came out the womb. Yes. We have to get to a point in our lives where, where we understand we ought to be an enemy of racism. Because, let me just share with you African Americans. If we get joy out of Hispanics and Asians being talked about because of their race. It's just a matter of time. And that time is already here. Matter of fact, that time been here over 400 years. It's just a matter of time before you're being talked bad to because of your race. Yeah, that's right. We have to stand and say, no, you can't do that. No, that's wrong. No, I won't have a part of it. I won't participate in it. Yeah, that's right. Too often we find ourselves as Saul in the book of Acts found himself. The Bible says that when they stoned Stephen, when they stoned Stephen in Acts chapter 7, the Bible tells us, and the Bible is clear, that Paul did not throw the stone. But Paul, when he was Saul, Saul held their coats. Mm -hmm. You see, just a matter of holding their coats is consentment. Just a matter of holding their coats is support. Just because you didn't throw the stone, you support them in doing them wrong. And we have to get to a point in our lives where we have the fear of God that we can use wisdom and that we can obey this God, the self-existing one, mm -hmm. that we can walk beside other people and hate wrong. Hate evil. This word evil is to harm, to afflict, to do wrong, and to be wretched. Mm. You, ever heard of, you ever heard a person say that person there is just wretched? I mean, what they're saying is that person has no conscience of what is right. Mm. That person doesn't care about anything but his own self and doing what makes him happy. We see that in the, the missing leadership in the United States of America. 
And I call it missing leadership because there is no leadership when you don't lead people in a way that they can get out of danger. Yes. We see the missing leadership on the national level. Then we see missing leadership on the state level. And we see missing leadership even on the city level. And we have to stand and say it is wrong. Yes. It doesn't matter if you voted them in or not. When it's wrong, it's wrong. I am grateful. Grateful. I am thankful for the mayor of Houston, Texas, for being willing to stand and call wrong, wrong. To be willing to stand against the whole GOP party. He's willing to not endanger the lives of these people in Houston, Texas for the sake of political gain. Yes. I'm thankful for that man of God. Amen. When, when the president says, I'm going to force you. I'm going to put a lot of pressure on young people to go back to school. And if you don't go back to school, you need to understand I'm going to defund you. I'm not going to give you money to that particular school that doesn't go back to school 100%. First of all, it is not his constitutional right. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to stand and say it is wrong. Yes. Secondly, we ought to go back to school. Listen to me. Listen to me good, dear. We ought to go back to school and send our children back to school when Baron Trump goes to public school. All right. We ought to send our children back to school when the White House is available for public tours where the president can come out and hug and shake hands with everybody. Then we ought to go back to school. We ought to go back to school when when he stopped stop putting his son in a bubble and, and making sure that the coronavirus does not surround him. Put him in public school. Then we should go back to school. My dears, let me just say to you, you have to have wisdom. You have to make sure that you have wisdom enough to protect your own because we have no leadership when it comes to protecting us. The Bible says in verse 13, Proverbs 8, that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It says pride and arrogance. These two words, pride and arrogance, are synonymous to each other. It means the swelling of the head. Pride and arrogance means that, that we have pomp and circumstance. Pride and arrogance mean that I'm putting myself up here and putting everybody else down here. Let me just say to you, when you're, pride and you, you're proud and you're arrogant, you will not hear from scientists. Mm -hmm. You will not hear from the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. You will not hear from God even speaking to you. When you're proud and you're arrogant, People cannot get to you and advise you. That's why today wisdom is saying, let me counsel you. Let me be your advisor. Then he says, you ought to fear God in such a way that you despise and hate the evil way. You see, for some people, this word, these words evil way means custom, manner, uh, conversation, and lifestyle. There are some people that we deal with from day to day that have created a custom. They created a lifestyle of just being evil. <laughs> they, they have created a mannerism. They created a conversation. This word conversation means their lifestyle. This word conversation also means what they're talking about. What they talk about is evil. They are plotting in the back room in the dark, but don't you know whatever is done in the dark will come to the light. Yes. Ditches that are being dug, they live for it. They have developed a custom and a lifestyle the evil way. The Bible says, wisdom says, we ought to hate it. We ought to hate it to the point that we despise it. Then he talks about the word perverse mouth. He says in verse number 13, and I also hate a perverse mouth. He says a perverse mouth, I, I hate it. He, he says, I, I hate this perverse mouth. This word perverse mouth, these words perverse mouth means he hate a forward mouth. 
He hates a mouth that speaketh fraud. He hates a lying mouth. God is looking forward to somebody who will tell the truth even if it hurts their feelings. Yes, God is looking. God is looking for somebody who will stand against the criminal injustice system. God is looking for somebody who, who will take up the mantle and run with it and say wrong is wrong. God hates yes. a perverse mouth. He, he hates a fraud. He, he, hurt, he hates a liar. He, God is not concerned about you getting the glory. He's more concerned about his glory. Let me tell you, you better not take God's glory. But when we look at Acts chapter 12, right around verse 21 and, and, and following, we find Herod, he stood up on a great day. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12, verses number 21 through the following, he says that Herod stood up on a great day and he gave a great speech. And the people said, this is not, this is not the voice of a man. This is the voice of a God. The Bible says that the people honored his speech so much until they put him on a pedestal to be God. Now, let me tell you, when somebody puts you on a pedestal, you better do like John the Baptist. No, that's not me. You better do like John the Baptist and keep pointing to Jesus. You better keep lifting up Jesus because when you lift up Jesus, he's the one that does the drawing. We cannot do things for selfish gain while other people go down the tube, while other people are miserable. Matter of fact, all that you have is not for you. It's for you to share it with somebody else that is hurting, mm -hmm. somebody else that is going through, somebody else that needs something. You need to make sure that you spend your time helping other people because everything that God has blessed you with is not just for you. Yes. Verse number 14 Wisdom is still talking. Wisdom says counsel is mine. And sound wisdom is mine. Wisdom is saying, that's what counsel means, that all the advice that you really need in life, the plans that you need in life, and the purpose that I, I give to you in life, you get it from wisdom. You have to get to a point in your life where you understand that wisdom was there in the future verses will tell you wisdom was there when God was there. So wisdom teaches us that he has, she has sound advice. She has a plan. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The Bible says, consider the cost. The Bible says, before you go and build a building, before you go and build your house, consider the cost. Now, this word house is not necessarily talking about the building that you live in, nor the building that you worship in. But before you build this house, before you build your innermost being, before you make a decision, you need the advice of wisdom. You need the counsel of wisdom. You need wisdom to give you a plan. I told you before that, that there are three ways to get wisdom. Number one, you if you lack wisdom, you ask it of God. Number two, if you lack wisdom, you hang out with people who have wisdom. Yes. Number three, if, if you lack wisdom, you read Proverbs every day so God can speak in your spirit wisdom. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you need wisdom. When, you, when, you, when you're living in these terrible times that we live in, you need to be wise about everything you do. Here I am, 57 years old. I can't take chances I took when I was 20. I can't take chances with my life that I took when I was 20. I can't take chances with my wife that I took when I was 20. I can't take chances with, with uh, my, my future that I took when I was 20. I can't take chances with my finances that I took when I was 20. You see, when, you, when you're young, you got time to recover. At least we think so. But only God knows how much time you have. Yes. 
there are just as many short grades as there are long grades, so none of us really know how much time we have. Wisdom tells us to take her advice and operate in a wise way, a skillful way, and don't just walk like you're walking through the tulip, and just like every day it's going to be Sunday. You ought to store, stir up, store up something for the future. Mm -hmm. Store up something for the future. So he says, sound wisdom. Verse number 14, wisdom says, counsel, advice is mine. He says, he says, sound wisdom belongs to me. The word sound means intelligent. The word sounds mean intellectual. The word sounds means substance. The problem with many of us, and I've been guilty of it before, that we make decisions and they're not good quality sound decisions. When you make sound decisions, you make intelligent decisions. You know, when you hear a person say stuff like this, well, you got to die from something, get away from that person. When they say you have to die for something, then that's a problem because they will risk your life and they will risk their life just to have their temporary pleasures. When you see a person that says uh, it's appointed to me to die, yes, it is. But just just in case you don't die, you want, don't want to live a miserable life. Amen. It is it is the depiction of an eighteen wheeler going eighty miles an hour down the freeway, and you decide I'm going to put God to the test. I don't I don't believe I'm going to die until it's my time, and you step off the side of the road into the pathway of that 18-wheeler that cannot stop at 80 miles an hour, and you get smashed to smithereens. Is that wisdom? Is that, is that what God has for you? You could have been shelling butter beans or something. You, you could have been making a difference in your life. You didn't have to make a dumb decision. And that's what our young people and some of our old people are doing when they put drugs in their system. Alcohol, where is access? Where you can't function. Prescription drugs taking over your life. You're not dealing with wisdom. Get some advice. Get some help. Get some counsel. Wisdom says, I am the counselor. Mm -hmm. He says, you need to have sound substance. Substance. You need to have sound. This word sound means you need to have wisdom with substance in it. That wisdom that will take you on from one point to the other. Talks about understanding. I am understanding. And I am strength. This word, this word understanding means that I give you meaning. I, I put meaning in your life. There are people walking around today. And you may be listening to me today and you you trying to find out why are you on planet Earth? I read, I read a good book called The Person Call You. It's a little orange book called The Person Call You. It's The Person Call You. Throughout this book, it talks about the fact that we are fit for a particular purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Throughout this book, it talks about the fact that, that we are called by God to do specific things in our lives. It encourages us to be all that we can possibly be in the name of Jesus. It, it encourages us to sit with God, pray for wisdom, pray for knowledge, pray for understanding, and ask God to show us and teach us how we ought to relate to people how we ought to relate to those who are in fellowship with us. How should we relate to people that are surrounding us? How should we relate to our enemies? How would we should relate? How should we relate to people of a different color? People of a different hue. People of a different race. And see, I found out, you know, I'm I'm naive, I guess. I just found out maybe a year or so ago, I found out that there was a difference between race and color. You see, race is, is uh, African-American, Caucasian. 
But color is when you have two African Americans, one is dark skinned, one is light skinned, and people treat different races and different colors different ways. You have to have wisdom how to relate to people. You young people need wisdom today. They can't wait on it. You need wisdom right now. How to approach your teacher. How to deal with all these things that's going on around us. How to deal with the political climate of this day. Lord, give me wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom says, in verse number 14, wisdom says, I am strength. The word strength means I have valor. I am a master. I have power. I have the mastery. In other words, I have mastered life. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is saying that I give you victory. And I do it with force. Let me just say, say, say to you today, wisdom has a way of giving you the skill of how to master your situation. Ooh, throughout school, even today, I, I'm praying, Lord, give me wisdom. I said to my advisor, my advisor yesterday as I work on my final degree, <laughs> I said to my advisor yesterday, I said to her, I told the Lord, Lord, when you bless me to get out of this degree, I may pray for you to help me through other classes, but I would never pray for you to give me another degree. What I, what I said, what I said to the Lord, now, Lord, I'm asking you to bless me to get out of this class, to get out of, get to graduate. When I say get out of, I don't mean, I don't mean withdraw. What I mean is I'm asking you, Lord, to bless me to graduate in June of 2021. I'm asking you to give me wisdom on how to matriculate through these classes so that I can get my degree. And Lord, if you get me out of this one, Lord, when you get me out of this degree, I won't have to call on you anymore for another degree. I, I'm going to call on you to get me through classes that I just want to take. But but when it comes to another degree, Lord, I, I, I promise you, I won't have to call on you for another degree. Wisdom has told me to take the classes I want to take after 2020 of June. Take what, And we ought to always be lifetime learners. And so we want to make sure that we are involved with the Lord and we are always involved in education and learning new things. But Lord, if you get me past this degree, after 2021 of June, I'm going to be praying, Lord, get me past this class, not past another degree. So we have to understand that wisdom has victory. Wisdom is our strength. Verse number 15. By me, kings reign, and rulers decree justice. Wisdom says that those who are of royalty, the word king means royalty, those who have ascended to the throne. He says those who have royalty, those who have ascended to the throne, they rule this word reign means they rule and they consult me. I want to remind you, in, in the United States of America, we don't have a king. We're not set up to have kings. So it, it baffles me when a man decides that he has ultimate power to operate as if he's a king. The text declares, wisdom declares, even those with ultimate power, even those who are kings, consult him. Even those who are king, they reign and rule by him. They reign and rule by her. Wisdom. Wisdom means that, that she is teaching and, and admonishing kings to do the right thing. Matter of fact, this word reign means to be inducted into royalty. Kings are inducted into royalty. Kings are, are ruling and consulting wisdom. And, that, and when you have a king, the king doesn't make statements and do not make decisions without consulting wisdom. Wisdom says that, that I'm, I'm blessed of the Lord, I'm so blessed of the Lord, and that, that uh, kings consult me. 
Then he, he goes on to say, look at look at look at the verse, the verse, verse, verse 15, he says, not only that, rulers decree justice. Rulers decree justice. These rulers, these rulers decree justice. Those who are over us, those who are in leadership, they decree. This word decree means they are they are governed by wisdom. The word decree means they are appointed with wisdom. Let me tell you, back in 2016, somebody didn't use wisdom. Somebody didn't use wisdom because wisdom says that if we decree a thing, we, uh, we make our appointments. We make our appointments of who's going to lead us through wisdom. A bunch of folk did not, did not, a bunch of states did not consult wisdom. When they chose the one who is not leading today. The word decree means to give a law or a prescription. You see, when you, when you walk in wisdom, you'll prescribe medication by wisdom. And you take the medication according to the label. You know, I have, I have pills sometimes. I have pills. And, and you know what I can do? I can self-prescribe my pill if I want to. And not only that, can I not only can I self-prescribe it, I can decide how often I need to take it. But when you're given a Z-Pack, when you're given a Z-Pack, it has a seven to ten day pill set up. You start with seven pills, and then you de decrease in the number of pills as you get toward the end of your week. So for seven days, you're supposed to take the Z-Pack, even if you feel better, you need to keep taking it. Wisdom is saying to us, we will go by what she prescribes. We will do what she has asked us to do. Wisdom says, be quiet, you be quiet. If you don't know how it's going to work out, if you think you got to speak up, wisdom says, hold your peace. We have to hold our peace. You see, we don't have a problem with, with, with wisdom telling us when to speak. Most of us have problems with wisdom telling us when not to speak. We have to understand that wisdom governs us and it decrees a thing. Justice, this word justice means equity. Word justice means prosperity, righteousness, evenness, and fairness. In other words, evenness is when everybody in the U.S. of A. is governed by the same plan. You know, I begin to wonder, and I've talked more about what's happening in the United States today than I ever have in my ministry because every day is something different. Mm -hmm. Every day is something that looks more like a, a communist country. I've talked more about it, and, and I begin to wonder, how is it equity when you have $2 trillion for the underprivileged, that is all spent in two weeks. That should last for a whole year. It's because, it's because those who are not in need, but those who are in greed received it before it trickled down to the person that really needed. Yes. Small businesses, small businesses cannot operate because the two trillion dollars never got to them. Wisdom says, those who obey me do not govern that way. Mm -hmm. right. Multi-million dollar people, millionaires and billionaires have received that money when they didn't need it. So Robin Hood, the Robin Hood theory is turned around. Where you take from the rich to give to the poor, now they take from the poor to make the rich fatter. Somebody has to say, it is wrong. Yes. The princes, the lawmakers, the princes, the lawmakers, the princes, the honorable stewards, the princes, the lawgivers are ruled and takes on the advice of wisdom. We have, we have lawmakers that, that are not wise. Thank God that there are some lawmakers who are thinking about those in disparities. Mm -hmm. Thank God there are some lawmakers 
who are thinking about the underserved, the unemployed, and the undeveloped. Thank God that some, some lawmakers, some princes are, are, are giving laws that will help those of us who can't help ourselves. Thank God for wisdom. The word rule means they exercise their power well. Mm -hmm. They exercise their power with the with authority, but they don't let the authority go, go, go to their head. They continue to treat people as people. Let me just say to you, my dear, if you are a supervisor, treat people as they are people. Don't treat them according to their color. Don't treat them according to their height. Don't treat them according to their weight. Don't treat them according to their size. Don't treat them according to their shape. Treat them as people. Matter of fact, treat them as you would love for someone to treat you. The golden rule still, still applies. Verse 16 said by princes rule, princes rule, nobles rule. Nobles are volunteer workers. Nobles are servants of the most high God. They rule with wisdom. Wisdom says in verse 16, Proverbs chapter 8, all the judges of the earth rule by me. Those who vindicate and those who execute and those who defend. Judges are those who vindicate. Judges are those who punish. Judges are, are those who execute and judges are those who defend. We saw just this week a man being set free, vindicated, that was dead guilty. There was no wisdom involved in executing that authority. Mm -hmm. Verse number 17, wisdom says, I love those who love me. Mm -hmm. Wisdom says, if you love me more than you love your own sense of direction. Wisdom says, if you love me more than your own selfishness, I love you too. Yeah, oftentimes someone asks a friend or a a girlfriend, or a mate, or a spouse, why you love me? The answer will come back, because you first loved me. Wisdom says, I love those who love me. I love those who hang out with me. I love those who take my counsel. I love those who participate with me. Wisdom is crying out, you ought to love me, because I'm trying to love you. It is a picture. It is a picture of a little boy that runs behind a girl in grade school every day. She doesn't give him the time of day, but she uses him. In between classes, he takes her books and he, he runs to her locker and helps her get her books out of the locker. He carries her books to her room. But when she gets her book to walk in the room, she doesn't even say thank you. But wisdom would tell us when somebody helps you, you ought to be kind enough to say thank you. Amen. The senior saints back home would tell you, boy, what you going to say? Girl, what you going to say? They'll tell you, you got to say thank you. I don't care what it is or how much it is or how much is it not. You need to be able to say thank you and it ought to come out automatically. This word love means that wisdom has a, an affection for us. And wisdom is saying, I'm your friend. Wisdom is saying, I want you to be my friend. Wisdom is saying, I want us to have Kananiya together. I want us to come together intimately. Wisdom is saying, I love you. And he says, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Amen. Those who seek me, I'm about to mess somebody up right now. I, I'm about to get on your schedule right now. I, I'm about to mess up your day right now. But it's in the text. It's, it's in the text. This word seek means to go looking diligently. This word seek not only means go looking diligently. First of all, this word diligent means that you ought to continue to look for wisdom. God deliver me from people who already know how to apply wisdom. Everybody, regardless of how old we are, how spiritual we are, we ought to diligently look for wisdom. Yes, Lord. Now, here's your messed up point. This word seek means look for wisdom early in the morning. Uh-uh. This word seek means to go and look for wisdom 
go and search out wisdom early in the morning. I just messed somebody up. Somebody, somebody just got messed up. Wisdom means to go looking for it early in the morning. Go looking for it while everybody else is asleep. Go looking for wisdom early in the morning. Get up and look for wisdom. Go and ask God for wisdom. This word seek means to look for it diligently early in the morning says, whoever looks for me, whoever seeks me will find me. Wisdom is saying, I'm not hiding from you. Matter of fact, I told you in previous verses, wisdom is saying, I'm on every hilltop looking for you. I'm at every intersection looking for you. I'm in every courtroom looking for you. I'm in every business looking for you. Wisdom is not hiding from you. Wisdom is not running from you. But you need to seek wisdom, ask God for wisdom. And when you seek and, and ask God for wisdom, you will find him or her rather. You will find wisdom. Word find means that wisdom will be delivered to you. God will, will take wisdom and drop it at your doorstep. Also, this word find means that wisdom will meet you. Wisdom will present herself to you if you get up early in the morning and look for wisdom. Some people couldn't handle that. Some people couldn't handle getting up early looking for wisdom because they got to get their last news in. The Bible says that wisdom is looking for you. Wisdom is, is looking to meet you. Wisdom will present herself to you. Wisdom is trying to make sure that she gets on your agenda. Finally, verse number 18, and I'll leave you alone. Riches and honor are with me, in doing riches and righteousness. This riches is wealth. Riches stands for enough. Riches mean that, that, that you have enough, you have a substance to survive you. The problem is when people look for more than enough. God give us daily bread so we can have enough. God gives us surplus. This word riches means our wealth. Don't go looking for wisdom and chasing wisdom down just for money. Wisdom has wealth for you. This word riches mean that, that you have wealth. That means that you won't have wealth for right now, but you would also have wealth for the future as well as right now. You see, there's a difference between money and wealth. That's why I always tell you that you need to have favor from the Lord because favor can give you money. Favor can present money to you. Favor can present money and deliver money to your doorstep. I'd rather have favor then have money. Riches is enough. He also says riches and honor. Honor, honor is splendor. 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 We have to examine the splendor of God. We have to examine the glory of God. Wisdom will show you the splendor of God. There is no God like our God. A God that can take nothing and create everything. You see, the law of conservation of energy, uh, it, it will tell us that, that, that energy can never be created nor destroyed. It can just be changed from one form to the other. The reason why energy cannot be created or destroyed is because God has already done all the creation that we can ever dream of. And because God has already done all the creating, we don't have to worry about creating energy. We just change it from one form to the other. When you put your key in your car and you, say, you turn it over, it says bloom. It's because God has created the energy to start the car. Man just took an engine. Man just took a spark plug. Man just took the key and made it make a conduction and, a, and made contact. Man created nothing. But man developed an engine around what God has already created. He changed it from one form to the other. Then he says, enduring, enduring riches and righteousness. And I want to close right here and let you know that righteousness is justice. And here lately, we've heard the word justice far too long, far too many times. But the good news today is God gives us through wisdom 
enduring righteousness. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is justice. He, he gives us enduring righteousness. This word enduring means antique. This word enduring means durable. This word enduring means valuable. You see, when God gives you something, he doesn't give you something that anybody can give you. He gives you enduring righteousness. It's an antique righteousness. It is a righteousness that exists from now on. He did it over 2,000 years ago. He did it with Jesus the Christ. He gave us wisdom. He gave us enduring righteousness over 2,000 years ago. He gave us Jesus. We were wrong. We were dead wrong. We were sinful. We had a way that was called sin. We had a way to sin. But over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ gave his life for you, and he gave his life for me. He died on a skull hill. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Out of that third day morning, he rose with all power so we can have enduring righteousness. We can have righteousness that is valuable, righteousness that lasts from now on, antique righteousness. If you're listening to me today, Jesus Christ is presenting himself to you in the form of wisdom. If you've not received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Be wise enough. Use wisdom's counsel and come to Jesus by yourself. Not, don't let other people have peer pressure placed on you and you don't come. I say to you today, you just need to get to know Jesus. The wisest thing you can do today is to get to know Jesus. And he will depart you from your sins. Jesus is willing to save you today. Yes, just believe in the story that Jesus died for your sins. Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, Jesus rose from the dead. If you can believe that story today, I say to you, come to Jesus just as you are. I say to you today, join me in prayer in these little simple words, asking Jesus to come into your life. Will you bow with me and repeat after me and invite Christ into your life? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe that you prayed that prayer. You are now born again. And when you die, you're going to heaven. Now go ahead and get involved in a Bible teaching church. And if you don't have a church home, or if you're listening to me and you would like to be a part of the New Beginning Church, I would like for you to inbox me and tell me you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And even while we are online, you can be a part of this church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Where Jesus is the master of the ship. Well, Jesus is the captain. You can get to know Jesus even better if you're a member of a church. I recommend the New Beginning Church. Please inbox me and let me know that you received Christ as your Savior. And let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. As well as let me know that you want to. You need prayer. And we'll be glad to pray with you and pray for you. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord. You can give to the Lord by three means. You can give by Zelle. You can give by Cash App. And you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, uh, 77459. 
Again, you can mail it in. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can send it by way of Zelle to our email. Our email is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. You can send it by way of Zelle. And also, Cash App, our cash tag is NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Soul. Hashtag NBC Souls. You can submit your offering by way of those three means. We'll be glad to receive your offering. You'll be blessing. You will be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Thank you for joining us here today at the New Beginning Church. Please come next time. This same station, these same stations on Zoom and Facebook Live. On Sunday morning, we have Sunday school at 9 a.m. on Sunday, every Sunday. And at 10.45 a.m., we have this worship service that you've just been a part of. And then on Wednesday night, we have at 7.20 p.m. our Bible study. So please join us. We'll be glad to be a part of service along with you. We'll be glad to have you as a part of our service. We thank God for another privilege, another opportunity to come to him and be be a blessing uh, to you, and we're looking forward to you being a blessing, a blessing to us. So thank you so much for, for coming and being a part of our service on today. Please continue to give. Thank those of you who've been mailing in your offering. Thank you who have been sending your offering in by, by Cash App. Uh, we're looking forward to those of you who will send by way of Zelle. Thank you so much for being a blessing to the kingdom of God. We're looking forward to the day that we can come together again and embrace each other. In the meantime, we want you to be safe. Be wise and be prudent. Don't let somebody tell you to do something that you know is not right to do. Put your mask on, keep your distance, wash your hands. Make sure you have wise counseling from the Lord. Also, those of you who are members of the New Beginning Church, we will have our prayer time by Zoom as well as by phone conference on 2nd and 4th Tuesday at 7 p.m. 2nd and 4th Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you want to be a part of that just and you haven't received the text message, just call me, text me, inbox me, and let me know you want to be a part of our prayer time. This Tuesday, uh, July the 14th, we will have the conference call. We will have the conference call for prayer. And two Tuesdays later, July the 28th, we will have our Zoom meeting for prayer. So that way everybody can get, a, be, get to be a part of our prayer time together. Look forward to seeing you. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us again. We look forward to God blessing and keeping each and every last one of us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another chance, another privilege, another opportunity. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us to operate in wisdom. Bless us to take on the counsel of godly wisdom. Bless us to walk with you in such a way, Father God, that we will be blessed of God and that we will operate and bless others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.